I receive the offer. Let's eat the offer. Well, I grew up in a crew. I don't have the problem of a male. <laughs> so I know it's Burima. <laughs> Are you the only person submitting now on this? Yes, I, I'm, I'm, I'm in my minutes, the 20 minutes, I want to do it. There were 20 minutes, yes. And I said I'm doing 15, Mr. Omoya will do 5. That's what I'm saying. He asked for 20, I'll do 15. All right. And Kaminoa, because of seniority, is asking for five. No, I have to use 15. There are very many people who say those things. So I, 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 I need 15 and give Mr. Ongoya. We need five. Kaminoa, five. Manota, the, let, let me start at this for one point. My Lord, my Lord, colleague, Mr. Daigua, whom I respect a lot, is saying that uh, probably we start with the uh, two points raised by our learned colleague, Mr. Joseph Kamoto. My Lord, my Lord the first thing, yeah? What is it? Oh. My Lord, the first thing is that the president cannot be sued. My Lord, for purposes of my understanding of the Constitution, everyone under the Constitution of Kenya is subject to the law. That is what the Constitution says. There is nothing the, the Supreme Court or any other court can say as valid law to change that position of the, of the Constitution. So to the extent that the the Supreme Court, assuming it ever says such a thing, that cannot be good law in the face of the Constitution saying everybody is under the law. Second point, my Lord, this, what is the nature of the proceedings? These are not civil proceedings. These are constitutional proceedings. If Article 149 of the Constitution says the President shall do this there is nothing in Article 156 that would entitle the Attorney General to be sued on behalf of the President. Because the Constitution itself says the President shall do this. My Lord, also, if this is Bill of Rights enforcement, if <coughs> the petitioners are saying the violator of the law is the President of Kenya, then the mandate of this court is to ensure the president does not violate the Bill of Rights. Nobody else can be sued on his behalf. I think we have done with that preliminary issue. Oh, and there is this issue of vacancy. My Lord, I was imagining that if this vacancy is troubling anybody in Kenya, two things. Number one, you would have seen some urgency in reconstituting IAPC. Some of the petitions that are before you, or that will find your way to your hands, are also saying the president cannot do what he's so desperate to do because there is no IAPC. So that is coming. So if there is any urgency, anybody who cares about vacancy, let us start with IAPC. But not also, if, uh, and I think Kenya are entitled to this information, Mr. Kamodo appears so ready that uh, a vacancy in the office of the president may arrive. Perhaps this is information the people of Kenya are entitled. Why is that so? Well, I'm, 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 I'm not saying anything. I've ended there. I don't know. I did say it. I did say it. Yes, my lord, now coming to the main issue. My lord, this forum, 
Uh, somebody said we are sitting past the desk. It made me remember something. I think I saw the presiding judge was practicing at some time when I was practicing as a lawyer in the 1990s. And I remember going to court very many, very many times with Dr. Kamenua, Paul Muite, and Dixon Kamal Korea. What was it all about? My Lord, during that time, and when we could go to those cases, eh, there was no distinction that was made. My Lord, with your very kind permission, I'm constrained to just want to get some clarification. Are we re-urging the application? No, I'm because responding. The, the role you have in Illinois, you are supposed to be responding to issues that have arisen. I don't think what you're speaking to has arisen, and there is no latitude that extends to that. Uh, to that yes. My Lord, we stand, uh, we, we want to get some guidance. My Lord, I believe those issues. Mr. Kidd, you had the clarifications earlier, yes. but now just stick to the reply according to uh, I'll do that. My Lord, one of the cases that during that time, because you know we can't address the literal issue. I'm trying to be global. My Lord, one of the, and, and these are global points I'm making with regard to the issues that have been raised. My Lord, you are effectively being told the petitioner and the respondent occupy the same space from the standpoint of our constitution. My Lord, the truth is we don't. And I say that for the simple reason eh, that these constitutions of Kenya was made explicitly to protect citizens who can suffer from harm from the executive and people who occupy power. This, that is what the protections are meant to do. Conservatory orders are given to ensure people whose rights are being violated and in need of protection that protection will be accorded. So somebody to say that an application for conservatory orders stays on the same level with an application by a violator to continue or to complete the violations, my Lord, that would amount to misreading the Constitution. And uh, this is not an idle issue. Under Article 20, it is very clear. The Constitution binds all state officers and this call. So the notion that we have a right to be heard, yes, when we shall be doing the petition, give them 10 hours and we shall not object, but let the subject matter be preserved. We've got no problem. The right to be heard under Mutuba rules is protected, but there is a distinction under our constitution between a violator and the victim of violation. That one is very clear in our views. Well, having said that, there is another office. There is a question of the impanelment, whether you call it assignment, appointment, the issue is for purposes of Article 165 of the Constitution, does the Chief Justice exercise judicial or administrative powers? I go with what Dr. Camino says. These are judicial powers. And judicial powers, my Lord, takes us to the oath that is prescribed by believing the that schedule of the Constitution. The chief, the, the, the chief, when the chief justice says, I uh, take an oath, it's to exercise the judicial powers that includes with regards to the high court, the powers under Article 165.4 of the Constitution. No such oath is taken by the deputy chief justice to enable her to do so. So that, my Lord, as long as, if you say it is administrative, we go to another level. The questions would be, can this be made without a formal judgment where the issue has arisen directly? Because as we were told by my learned colleague, Mr. Waduta, that matter is still yet to be decided by the Court of Appeal. My Lord, having said that, there's a question my learned Professor Moigai, who I learned a lot from him. My Lord, Professor Moigai talks about public interest, the issue of of the necessity for it and about a vacuum arising. But the happy thing about the Constitution is that uh, up to this time, the petitioners have done nothing that would elongate the time at least of 74 to 100 days that is envisaged under Article 149 of the Constitution for this business to be conducted. If anything, it is this kind of applications to set aside that will prevent these petitions from being heard, for example, in the next 30 days, 
so that there is still some other 30 days for the people of Kenya to be consulted on this issue and the regular decisions to be made by parliament. Malota, there, there is an issue that, uh, that we, an, an absurdity is being created. Who is creating an absurdity? The absurdity, my lord, that is being created is this. And strictly speaking from Article 25 of the Constitution, Article 25 of the Constitution says the right to be heard is absolute, even during an emergency. How is the, can this right ever be, an, be absolute and this court were to take away the subject matter before that right is exercised and you do not call that an absurdity? We are actually here to prevent that absurdity. In fact, you can have a, a, a ranking of absurdity. The biggest absurdity, my lord, would be this, Article 125. All rights under Article 24 can be limited. Under Article 25, the right to be heard is absolute. It is binding on everybody. That's the biggest absurdity that can occur. Who supports that absurdity? The respondents. My Lord, uh, the, the, we, we, we go next to Professor Ojienda. Of course, Professor Gedu said many things which you cannot deal with all of them. This internal memo, why is it? Oh, it's here, it's here. My Lord, this internal memo, first of all, we note, when the question was asked, is it anywhere? It is not in the CTS. Start one. Number two, or part of, for the cases that have actually been filed. My Lord, the, the second issue, there is no reply at the end for this court to be able to deal with it. But what does it actually say? It says, during my absence, I request you, your ladyships, to be in charge. I will, however, be available on email or telephone for consultation. My Lord, the last sentence, plain meaning of English, would mean to me that Chief Justice from Geneva or anywhere else she was cannot be able to carry out certain administrative functions. But when she says that to be consulted, this was clearly made in the knowledge that there are certain things that I must do, notify me so that I can do them. The appointment of judges could be made by the Chief Justice in accordance with the constitutions from Geneva. My Lord, um, I could have said more, there is not much time. <laughs> My Lord, we are, my Lord, they, they say they are challenging expert orders. My Lord, what expert orders is the main issue. The expert orders we are challenging is a conservatory order to ensure that before this court, there will be integrity and the constitutions will be upheld. And the kind of circus we had in parliament will not happen before you. My Lord, the... My Lord, for purposes of uh, where do we, we want this matter to be completed? My Lord, they said uh, this is uh, that they want the matter to be completed. We are more desperate for this matter to be completed. And that is why in the expectation of the petitioners, we expected that the first business of this court, like it happens every time I sit on benches, and I've sat on very many, they say this matter is very urgent, we cannot hear preliminary matters. Let's go straight to the petition. So we are very desperate to have this matter heard. My, my Lord, there is my learned colleague, Mr. Nyamodi, whom again is a good friend of mine I respect. CJ occupies three constitutional offices, I agree. But the only issue of distinction is under Article 1654 of the Constitution, she does not, because she cannot, she cannot be able to perform that function any more that we could say she could transfer judges. Transfer of judges is actually more or less <laughs> administrative, but she doesn't do it. Because it is an important office that goes with the office of the Chief Justice. It's under, but if this is judicial, she cannot be able to do it. My Lord, the, 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 the issue of Conchella, again, the issue is contextual. The Chief Justice was a party, and therefore in Conchella, as far as I am, I, I am concerned, the matter, the, uh, the deputy chief justice did so as an acting chief justice. Even Gashagua or anybody else who gets into that position, when they are acting as acting president, there are certain decisions that they can make, but they must wear that position. In this letter, there is nothing that suggests 
that the chief, uh, the deputy chief justice will stand into uh, enacting the chief justice by the CJ. Equally importantly, there is no express delegation that my powers under Article 165.4 would, would now be performed by the deputy chief justice. Malauda, the issue of uh, uh, Gumbo came with some funny issue on uh, <laughs> of material facts. I do not know. I struggled to listen that we have concealed anything. Now, as anything, we actually even did an affidavit. We had a right to do an affidavit. It is not indicated that this document, which was in our possession, as I understand the law of disclosure, we failed to disclose it. All the other issues they are raising are points that are in contention. That does not amount to concealment, as I understand it within the law. My Lord, there was uh, the question that uh, no basis for Getonga Murugaro. Getonga Murugaro, sometimes Murugaro. 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 Mur